All right, everybody, we've got winter weather on the way to the Carolinas, but like every storm is a little different. This one is as well. I will tell you this. We're not looking at a big snowstorm right now because of a couple reasons. It looks like a wintry mix, but we're certainly going to see some wintry weather. It's just a matter of how much. So let's get right to the first part of this, the cold air. The cold air is in place. You know, the thing about winter weather, two big caveats you always got to worry about with winter weather. If you want to see snow, you need cold air and you need moisture and you need it in the right amount. So first things first, the one thing that I think is a little interesting um, is the cold air is pretty cold, but there's some hints that it might not be as cold in the guidance. Now, that's where I think there might be some discrepancies in what's actually happening. Because you can see the air mass is pretty cold over most of the country. I'm going to remove that real quickly. And I'm going to show you a couple things that are kind of fascinating. I'm going to turn on the visible satellite image. And while there is snow across the Midwest, one thing you notice, there is a lot of snow cover. We've actually got some pretty decent snow cover up in here. And one of the things about that, that could make the air colder than the guidance thinks. So that's one little wrinkle to keep an eye on. Now, it doesn't look like much happening right now, but this is the beginnings of our system here. It's going to move down to the Gulf and then eventually move up the East Coast. But this is where the big discrepancies are. The cold air might not be even the biggest discrepancy. So down here in the northern Gulf, we get low pressure to form. Two things happen. It jumps to the coast and one, one or two things are going to happen. This low is going to get stronger and it's going to pull in more moisture and actually drag down more cold air. Or it's going to stay weaker and go out this direction instead of cranking up the coast. So this is a huge question mark right now, more so than even the cold air. And because of the current guidance, the way it looks, it's a fast moving kind of jumps to the coast and then gets out of here quickly. It limits the amount of moisture. Even if there is enough cold air, there isn't a ton of moisture to produce a big event. So that's one of the biggest discrepancies. So we're going to switch here and go to the latest guidance here. I don't often like go right to this, this forecast, but I, I, I'm kind of sticking with this right now just as a, as a general guide. Please do not read into one specific model. All of them are wrong. We're looking at a blend, and I'm actually going to show you some blends here in a minute to kind of describe. But this, just for full transparency, uh, this is actually the current, the morning run of the GFS model. A couple things to notice on here we probably don't explain enough. These lines, this 540 line, is typically the rain snow line, but you can get snow south of there. But these blue lines basically tell you where it's below freezing in the cloud level, up around 5,000 feet and above. Um, and so we'll go through time. This is today. No issues today. <clears throat> we'll go through tomorrow. Really no issues tomorrow. We'll get into Wednesday morning. I'm going to stop this at 7 a.m. in the morning. Low pressure tries to form down near the, the, near the northern Gulf. And you can see the moisture to the north. This is primarily snow because the air is cold enough. It's pretty early in the morning. As we get later into the morning, so we start getting closer to the middle of the day, um, it's kind of weird. It's not rain, snow. There's probably some mix in here of rain, snow, sleet, honestly. Um, the low tries to jump to the coast, and then we get into the jumbled mess. So this is about 1 o'clock. Whoops, let me go back. That was weird. We're going to go to 1 o'clock on, on Wednesday. So this is 1 o'clock Wednesday. Notice the low pressure is trying to reform here. We've got an icy max of everything. I mean, you see the purple, the pink, the blue, and the green. That's literally everything you could possibly get falling from the sky. So it makes it real interesting. Um, but the one thing you notice, the cold air up here is much colder, that 540 line. Remember I showed you that earlier. Um, the 540 line is, is definitely something I keep an eye on. That's where you know anything along or north of this line, that's solidly all snow. This is where you get into the dreaded mix right in there. And that's kind of what's going on. We can take a quick look at the sounding, which is always fascinating. I'm going to look for it close to Charlotte here. This shows you the profile of the atmosphere. And if you look carefully, the blue line is the freezing line. It's 30 at the surface, which is below freezing. But up here, you know, five to 10,000 feet, we're, we're getting closer to above freezing. And so the uh, model or the guidance wants to call this freezing rain. But it probably could be freezing rain sleep or snow. It, it's, so, it's such borderline. It kind of gives you an idea of like how close we are to seeing a little bit of everything. But you see the low, I'm going to go through time, quickly exit. And the reason I have high snow totals, I'm going to show you my map here in a minute up in here. That's the one area where it looks like there could be a big burst of snow before it exits the coast. What's interesting is, you know, it changes the freezing rain and a mix in the afternoon over us. But then in the evening, it dries out. And then there might even be a few stray flurries that try to make it in here early on Thursday as the cold air. You can see the 540 line. Remember the 540 line, look where it is on Thursday morning. So it's really cold Thursday morning. The problem is the moisture has gotten out of here. So 
it's really cold Thursday morning, regardless of what falls from the sky on Wednesday. We kind of missed our, our best cold air by a day with the precipitation and then it's gone. So that's just kind of a, an example of, of one of the pieces of guidance. I'm going to show you one other piece of guidance here. We'll show you the European model just, just to give you, a, I always like to show both. Whoops, we're going to go just so you have a general idea on what each version is showing. And again, I'm not looking at one specifically, but they're kind of showing essentially the same thing with small changes. And that's the key, small changes. So European model, almost identical, kind of just a little bit further south maybe, but that's pretty consistent. You've got two of the major models kind of in the same. They show the low pressure cranking up a little bit more and staying south and trying to become a nor'easter. It tries to go up the east coast, but stays far enough offshore where it's not a big deal. So let's get to the maps. This is what everyone cares about, right? Uh, so here, here's the latest. Uh, I could get into all the details more as we get closer, but you, there's a lot of uncertainty with this. So again, this will change a bazillion times between now and, and, and Wednesday. I think generally a trace to an inch is probably the best. Interstate 40 north, maybe an inch or two. I do have a little bit of a bullseye up in uh, southeastern Virginia, northeastern North Carolina because of that coastal low. Um, and again, remember, it's all about where that warm, warm air is. We could have a pocket of warm air in the mid-levels which could really screw things up. Sleet could reduce our totals to nothing, to maybe trace amounts. If it's more snow, it fluffs it up because snow is 90% air. You can get a little bit of moisture and get a lot of snow out of it. Sleet and freezing rain, it just doesn't amount to much. So that's the close in view. Ice, this is probably the most uncertain part of my forecast because I do think there'll be some ice, but because of the fast movement of the system and it doesn't last long, there might be a, a small pocket here in Eastern North Carolina that gets up to a quarter inch, but I don't even think that happens because of short duration. So it's more of a glaze, if anything. Um, and that's what I'm thinking for our area. So I think it starts as snow, rain, sleet, changes to freezing rain. It might even end as snow um, overall as we go through time. Now, I built this just based on the general timing, but I am not super confident in the timing either. But 7 a.m. Wednesday morning, things start. Um, and again, it's probably not all snow. There's probably rain mixing with snow and sleet. But sometime in the middle of the day, we're likely going to see a transition to some freezing rain. And how long that lasts and how much it is, that's the biggest question. Because it could be just a glaze or it could be more. Uh, but there is going to be a transition there. You can see for most of the Piedmont, outside of Hickory and Boone, which I think will primarily be snow, maybe just light snow, but all snow, the Piedmont, I mean, this includes Lake Norman, Salisbury, Statesville. I mean, all the areas east of the mountains, really. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a mix. So if we look at the impact graphics, the, the, the gray is limited impact. So I, mean, I think that's based on the low amounts of precipitation, but also the fact that it's in the middle of the day. And even though it could be snowing or freezing rain, it's likely that the road surfaces will remain wet, especially with brine on them and during the day. Once we get past sunset, the precipitation moves out, but anything left over could refreeze. As I showed you, it's going to be pretty cold on Thursday morning. So honestly, some of the worst travel might end up being after the system is out of here and we get a refreeze with the black ice. If, if you had to ask me right now, we're probably going to see winter weather advisories. I wouldn't be surprised if later today we see some counties under a winter storm watch just for a heads up. And that could be upgraded to an advisory or a warning at some point. So this kind of breaks it down in a nutshell. Um, Wednesday morning to Wednesday evening, a mix of snow, sleet, and freezing rain. Probably the biggest issue is going to be travel. It's not enough ice right now to cause major power issues. It's not enough to cause widespread disruption. It's really just going to be slick roads, probably more so Wednesday night into Thursday morning, even though the precipitation starts on Wednesday morning. So if, if you want to change your plans, if you need perfect weather to drive in, um, I would wait till, you know, do it Tuesday before the system hits or wait till Thursday after the sun comes up and things warm up. If you don't want to be on the roads at all, even in the rain, you want to avoid Wednesday altogether. Me personally, I'm probably going to drive. I really have no issues driving this, but that's me. Remember, everyone's personal risk is different, but that's kind of the setup right now. I will continue to post updates. Don't expect this to be a winter wonderland or a big snow event. This is, again, a low end event, um, low amounts of sleet ice, freezing rain, drizzle, all that stuff. It's not a huge event, but it could be impactful on the roads. And again, if I'm going to be you know, concerned of anything, it's going to be right here. This is going to be it. The travel is going to be the biggest impact we see from this system. 
Have a great Monday. I will be on air, obviously, 4, 5, 6, and 11, WCNC+. Plus. You can stream us. You don't have to be in front of a TV. Have a TV. Be in our viewing area. You can watch everything on your phone. So get that WCNC Plus app or go to our website or app, and you can watch all the updates there live in real time from any device.